This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, getting you ready for today's sports day. You know, three of the first four games have been at home, so you know at some point in time you're going to have to venture out outside the 806, so that'll be... That'll start this week. While having a little fun along the way. Always good if you can blame it on somebody else, right? Yeah, sure. Especially some media guy. Sure. Right, some media guy. Catch the show live weekday mornings from 6 to 9 on Lubbock Sports Station. Double T 97.3. Stafford is under center on third and one. And a play fake to Brown. He's rushed and he's sacked. And the ball came out. And Dallas picks it up. It's Lawrence coming left to the five and into the end zone. And it looks like a Dallas touchdown. It's the first fumble recovery of the year. And it goes for a scoop and score. Thank you, Brad Sham. As the uh, Cowboys uh, take down the Los Angeles Rams yesterday at SoFi in uh, Inglewood, California, Cowboys uh, get yet another win uh, thanks to their defense. And, and Cooper Rush, look, he, he acquitted himself quite well. He didn't make any mistakes. Uh, he did what he needed to do. Cowboys offensively did what they needed to do. They took advantage of what the defense gave them, which was the scoop and score, the block punt. They didn't capitalize on that because that led to a field goal. Um, But like I said, I mean, Cooper Rush, he didn't hurt you. And I think that's the the biggest thing. Tony Pollard was, uh, and Zeke Elliott, both were terrific. Um, Pollard, 86 yards, but uh, 57 of them on one play that was just an effort touchdown. Yeah, that's fair to say. No, I think the defense definitely led the charge. It felt like whenever, every time you turned around, they were making a big play mm-hmm. for you. Uh, it's fun to watch how that defensive line just seem, seems to be getting better and better. And the, the scoop and score is awesome. I love a defensive lineman touchdown. Um, but really set the tone. And then your offense is just not making a lot of mistakes. And and you love you love to see that. I mean, it looks like that, that unit is confident behind Cooper Rush. It looks like... Uh, you know he's get, he's getting good work up front by by the big guys and um, man I, I it's just hard to not be impressed with uh, just the way they've kind of handled the adversity of hey you're losing your starting quarterback your star all of that and it's just like hey next man up mm-hmm. uh, so you got to give Cooper Rush a ton of ton of credit for that. Uh, Ceedee Lamb had uh, five balls uh, for 53 yards probably should have had more. Um, he had eight targets. Uh, Michael Gallup, four catches for 44. The one he dropped, though, uh, was could have gone for it. Would have gone for a first down. Would have helped extend a drive. But it's good for Gallup to be back in. That was really. It was really weird. It was like a third and I think it's third and two, and there was a a coach or an assistant coach on the Rams sideline who was running towards Gallup as he's running towards the sideline, and he was he was calling out for his defensive guy for a spot for him because Gallup was clearly open and all Rush had to do, it wasn't a crisply thrown ball, but it was a ball that Gallup probably would say he should have caught. But I wondered at the time that that guy, because I've never seen coaches like run towards the sideline. He was almost just running directly at Gallup. Uh, He wasn't inbounds by any stretch of the imagination, but I just wonder if Gallup saw that in the corner of his eye and took his eye off the ball and that's why he dropped it. It's possible. You know, uh, it was just, but you know, uh, Cowboys did what they needed to do. Um, they they won the they won the ball game, and like you said, I mean, it seems like Cooper Rush is handling things. They were, I mean, the Cowboys are going to have to get better on third down. They were only five of fifteen uh, on third down. They didn't turn the ball over, um, and they took advantage of turnovers uh, because they forced two fumbles, had an interception, and a blocked punt. Mm-hmm. So that you're pl- basically you're plus four there. Sure. You know, you're mm-hmm. basically plus four, and you're going to win a ton of ball games um, when you do it. But this defense is really fun to watch. I mean, Dorrance Armstrong has come into his own. I mean, certainly what um, Micah Parsons is doing feels like he's getting held on every play. They could feels like they could call holding on him on every play. Yeah, well, I mean, with, uh, on the offensive lineman that's trying to keep him from getting to the quarterback. Yeah, guys, an absolute stud difference maker. No, no, no doubt. And uh, they're getting a, a lot of hurries and. Uh, and things like that. So, you know, Cowboys uh, knock off the defending Super Bowl champions, and uh, and the Rams. Boy, they don't feel like that at this point. Do no, they? no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, but you know, but when you when you look at the when you look at the numbers though for for um, Matt Stafford, I mean, he was twenty eight of forty two for three oh eight, uh, through a touchdown, through a through an interception. Um, 
the, the Rams just didn't had no rushing. They ran the ball 15 times for 38 yards. You're just not going to win the National Football League when you do that. Mm-hmm. Even when your quarterback throws for 300. So, <clears throat> uh, Cooper Cup, he had a terrific run. His One of his his longest was 75 for a touchdown. And that was, was a pretty play. I mean, he eluded a lot of guys. You saw why he was, you know, in 75. That's funny, Jamie. <clears throat> they get a 75-yard uh, reception and a 54-yard reception. So, 129 yards of his 320. It's a little deceiving, the 320, because 129 come on two plays. Yeah, a bit. But <clears throat> So he made the he made the big throws, and he made some small throws. Well, and, That's and, fair. and that throw to Cooper Cup was, I mean, the throw was maybe five, seven yards. Cup just did an outstanding job. Sure. Came across the middle. The, the Stafford did a mm-hmm. great job of zipping it in there, and then he took off, and he had just eluded guys with, what he does, yeah, sure. you know, with what with, with what he does. So, um, Cowboys, you know, like I said, I mean, they're I think they're off to a good start. They're fun to watch, Jeff. This is a, a team that you <laughs> shut your mouth when we're talking about a win streak. <laughs> well, I think I the think... Cowboys are a disaster, and we have no idea how they're going to win another football game. Okay, we are not jinxing this. You know, the, the question will be. It's funny, the, the question will be, when does um, Dak Prescott come back? Uh, does he come back next week, or do they wait yet another week? Um, and listening to Jerry Jones and his comments from the owner's box on uh, Double T 97.3 yesterday, it, he kind of made it sound like Prescott is not quite ready yet, that even though he's throwing his grip on the ball, blah, 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 it's just not, not quite there yet. So Jerry's kind of backed off a little bit on him being back for the Rams, right? That's what he that's what he had said. Mm-hmm. Cowboys will play at Philly on Sunday night. Um, with Tom Rinaldi, he was talking about, well, he shook uh, Dak Prescott's hand and he had a strong handshake. So he he felt like that that strong handshake <laughs> was a was a um, a prelude to Prescott being ready for next week. We should have sent you there to shake his hand and then we would I mean, I mean there's an yeah, expert handshaker. Right, we then we then, then we then we would know. Yeah. I thought of you, and I wrote this guy's name down. On and I don't know that I'll ever use this because I want to run this term by you. Um, but Eric Collins was the television play-by-play announcer. I, I think he's really good. I, I don't know him at all. Uh, I've seen him do a few uh, Big Twelve games, but I like him. Um, he uh, he called it an Oklahoma State touchdown. He just referred back to it. He goes, "Well, they got a tutty. They got a tutty on their first drive too." Mm, boy. A tutty. What do you think about that tutty? Um, I think I'm out. You're down on the down on the tutty. I, I kind of I figured you would be. I figured you. Yeah, that makes two of us. Down on the tutty. That okay. yeah. Mm. I thought that I thought that was new. I thought that was something different. Might be new and different. Doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, what, going back to the tech game, a, a number of times the offense put the defense in a bad spot, and the defense rose up. So I th- I think you've got a defense here. Yeah, I don't th- I mean, that's not that's not new though. No, it's not new. I just but but when you're playing the number seven team in the country at their place, mm-hmm. they they continue to kind of uh, you know. And I felt like validate this, what they do. Yeah, I felt like in this game you didn't put your the defense in as bad of a spot as many times as you had in the past because you didn't turn the ball over. You know, no. obviously right off the bat you you did with the onside yeah. kick and right. I mean, two plays later, they score. Mm-hmm. Um, so right off the bat, you did. I'm trying to think of other times in the game where there was a, a fourth down where you you didn't get it, and you, yeah. you put them in a put them in a spot, and you know they uh, they were able to uh, you know only get a field goal uh, mm-hmm. out of it. Uh, Oklahoma State, uh, you know, they had a took the ball in their sixth possession from their own 27. They converted on a fourth and five, uh, and then Tech held. Um, them to a field goal. I thought that was, you know, pretty impressive because they get the, they get the ball um, at the you know down to the thirty five, and then and then they get a a twenty eight yard play to on a twenty eight yard play to Bryson Green. The drive ends up stalling, um, and they have to kick a field goal. And Tech would leave at, at that point twenty one to twenty. Um, there there were some big moments in the game that that cost the Red Raiders too. A couple of them, you know, one that's pointed out on the text line when you fair catch on your own four yard line you think that's the that's the play of i think the game. it's a play of the game yeah i think that's where the game Hard was lost with that. 
You were up tw uh, 31 23. Should have had the ball with all the momentum in the world at the, you know, at the 20, 25, whatever. Mm -hmm. And instead, you're starting uh, inside your own five on a kick that's not a kick that's up and coming down. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was going to bounce and bounce through the back of the end zone. Yeah. I mean, and immediately you. Yeah, you, you, especially with a young quarterback, you're either you're just cutting down on the playbook there drastically. You go three and out. They mm -hmm. immediately move down the field, score the touchdown, um, get the two, get point. The two point conversion. Yep. Mm -hmm. All the momentum you had is completely flipped to them. You immediately come out and throw the interception that mm -hmm. leads to three. You went from up eight to down three in three or four minutes. All the momentum was on their side, and you were, were not the same team afterwards. Yeah, because you take that on you take that uh, fair catch, and you like you said, you go three and out, and then you punt, and they get the ball at their own forty-seven yard line, and so that flips the field to their favor, and then they go like you said straight down the field and score. You're listening to the Morning Drive Podcast from Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3, recapping the night that was in the world of sports. A little bit later on tonight, uh, we'll have uh, the Astros and the Diamondbacks. That'll be at 8. And then the Rangers playing at Seattle uh, tonight. And also bringing some humor to your day. Was it pretty big? Yeah. I mean, it was Impressive? Some, yeah. Was it fascinating? It was. I thought it was fascinating. It kind of smelled, but I mean. <laughs> Hear the show live weekday mornings at 6 on Double T 97.3 or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. Today is October the 10th, 2022. Time for this day in sports history. Here is Jeff McGuire. Going to start in 1920 today mm -hmm. because the Cleveland Indians outfielder Elmer Smith Hits baseball's first ever World Series Grand Slam. Nice. 1923, the New York Giants and New York Yankees become the first teams to play each other in three consecutive baseball World Series. Giants win game one, five to four, in the first game uh, World Series game played at Yankee Stadium. Must have been boring, though, the same matchup three years in a row. <laughs> it's like right. a college football playoff or something. All right. 1945, in the World Series, the Tigers beat the Cubs 9-8 to at Wrigley Field to clinch the series four games to three. It was the Tigers' second championship. 1956, Yogi Berra hits two home runs, and the Yankees beat the Brooklyn Dodgers 9-0 in Game 7 of the World Series at Ebbets Field. Yankees pitcher Don Larson was your MVP. Yeah, because he had thrown a perfect game in that series. 1961, expansion draft uh, to stock the Houston Astros and New York Mets took place. Mm. First pick by the Houston Colt 45s, Eddie Busmond. Besmond, B-E-S-S-O-U-D, O-U-D, Besmond. I said it three different ways there. Maybe I got it right <laughs> once. <laughs> I tried to look it up. Yeah. I found an interview with him. He seems like a very interesting guy to 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 talk to and, mm -hmm. and hear about all of his life in baseball. He actually was a coach at a community college after he retired from baseball. Never once did they mention his name in the interview. 15-minute <laughs> <laughs> interview, waiting for them to say the guy's name. Uh, where was I? Uh, 1976. Giants Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey opens. Uh-oh. With the Giants going down 24-14 to 14 mm. to the Dallas Cowboys in front of 76,042 fans. I thought you were going to tell me that was the miracle at the Meadowlands. In game one? Well, no, once you said game one, I knew uh, it wasn't. Okay. 1980, in the American League Championship, the Kansas City Royals beat the New York Yankees three games to none. I know. That was uh, at Yankee Stadium. Nice. That, that last game. And in 2004, having already clinched his second, his seventh, excuse me, F1 World Series Drivers Championship, German Ferrari driver Michael Schumacher wins a record 13th race of the season with a victory at the Japanese Grand Prix. Jamie is a huge fan, I think, of both of these today for our food. It is National Tic Tac Day. I'm a fan. And I, I like a 
good smelling breath. <laughs> Very much against the bad breath. Okay. The Tic Tac will do it. Well, the white ones. Not all of them. Okay. Some of them are just for flavor, but the white ones will help Can you breath. sing the jingle for us? Give me a break. Give me a break. No, that's a different that's one. That's the no. Kit Kat. That's Kit Kat. Yeah. Um, no, I can't. Put a Tic Tac in your mouth and let Tic... Uh, so apparently neither one of us can. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. yeah, that's as far as I can go. Sorry. It's also National Angel Food Cake Day. Okay. Nye. Hmm. Nye. I think the only time I ever have angel food cake is when I'm having a strawberry shortcake. Okay. Happy birthday to Mario Lopez, who's 49. Alleged scumbag Brett Favre is 53. What? <laughs> You say alleged because you don't know for a it fact. It hasn't been proven yet. Okay. Oh, well, uh, I'm just I, curious what you need there. Dude. I need the court case to go through. Okay. Just, what about the pitchers? I'm. He'd just be weird, but stealing money from kids makes you a scumbag. Um. <laughs> okay. Okay. Dale Earnhardt Jr., 48. Remind me not to ever look on Jeff's phone. <laughs> I'm free to look at my phone. There's no pictures on there except of my dog. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr., 48. Geno Smith, 32. And Andrew McCutcheon is 36. And I've got two things in history today because after the first one, I need a palate cleanser. 1944. 800 children are gassed to death at mm. Auschwitz. This, of course, is one of the concentration camps by the Nazis in... Uh, during World War II. Mm -hmm. In 1987, as a palate cleanser, so we're not thinking about that all day long today. White Snake, here I go again, tops the charts. There you go, Jamie. It's a good one. Yeah. And that is this day in sports history. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, we kind of updated our sounder there a little bit. Time for your secret word of the day because Double T 97.3. Along with basically everybody else is tired of the national radio contest that the other stations have. So we want you to have a chance to win $10,000 right here in good old Lubbock, Texas, America. We've teamed up with the Home Zone, making your house a home to give away $10,000. We give the secret word at this time, 845, and then in the afternoon during Tech Talk at 445. At uh, 645-ish, which is now 651-ish. Secret word for today is Falcons. Falcons. F A L C O N S. Falcons. Okay. Not God hosed Falcons. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not worst call ever Falcons. Not like Tom Brady deserves like a roughing the passer uh, call just because they tackled him. Falcons. Not. Officials need to be fired, but Falcons. Yeah, Falcons. It's our secret word of the day here today at 651-ish. Go to double T973.com. Enter that in. You could become a winner. We'll give it away on November the 18th. Of course, the more times you enter, which means the longer that you listen, the more of a chance that you have to win, which means you could be a happy person come right about Christmas time. Okay? Because Black Friday is the next week. Did you know that? The day after Thanksgiving? Is, is the next week. November the 18th is when we're going to give it away. Okay. We'll put $10,000 in your hand probably Monday or Tuesday. As soon as uh, On Highest gets the official check, meets with you, shakes your hand, smiles and says, thanks for listening. Okay. okay. Come down here to the new compound. Get your picture taken with Jamie. Some of the other stars here. And get uh, get ten thousand dollars. You can put it right in your checking account, and it it won't bounce. Nice. No Bitcoin or anything like that. Good. So going back to your uh, Major League Baseball expansion draft in nineteen sixty one, here's here's some names that stand out to me. Not for what they did on the field as a player, but what for they did as a field on the field as a manager. Among those selected. Gil Hodges, who was a really good player, but he would become a manager, okay? Um, also selected was Don Zimmer. He was a, a pretty good manager for the uh, for the Red Sox and others, was also more famous maybe as a, a coach um, for the Yankees. And, famous uh, for being thrown by Pedro Martinez. Pedro by Martinez. <laughs> um, 
Joey Amafitano was uh, also selected. He was a he was a manager back in the day. He sounds like a guy that was a lead singer in a boy band. Yeah. <laughs> In, in fact, he was selected off of the uh, San Francisco Giants. So anyway, I just thought that was, I thought that was kind of, uh, and Roger Craig uh, was as well. He was another guy that would be uh, a manager for the San Francisco Giants. Roger Craig was a was a pitcher for the Dodgers. Would go on to play a little bit for the Mets, but was more known as a manager than as a player. A lot of those guys were. Anyway, just. Just some walking around knowledge for you for today, if you need some. A lot of people have today off. Today's Columbus Day as well. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good for them. Yeah, good for them. Have fun. Enjoy. I hope you're not listening. I hope you're sleeping in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that plenty of plenty of people, you know, they kind of have that internal clock that goes off that they just can't wait to hear your voice, Jamie. It's close to seven. By seven, they'll probably wake up. Wake up and go, man, I gotta I gotta get me some Jamie. Yeah, I missed the first hour. Chuck, <laughs> Jamie, and Jeff. You're tuned in to the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3, recapping the night that was in the world of sports. That's not to say that they don't respect the run game that you have, but you're talking about one quarterback leading the, the conference in passing so far this year. And remember, he didn't start the first game. All right. He still played a lot, though. And also bringing some humor to your day. I, I just don't want to disappoint you. I just, <laughs> as much as I disappoint you, I don't want to disappoint you in some things that you expect from me. Hear the show live weekday mornings at 6 on Double T 97.3 or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. Nice to have you with us this morning with Jamie Lynn and Jeff McGuire. I'm Chuck Hines. Thoughts, comments, Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to Double T 97.3. Dot com from that. Just a quick question from someone on the onside kick. They said, stupid call. I thought it went 10 yards drinking a lot of adult beverages and missed explanation. Okay. Well, it was popped up in the air. The guy called for a fair catch. We hit him. Uh, you can't do that. And uh, as a result, they got the ball at the Tech 34-yard line. So if you'd hit the ball on the ground first, then, then you could have done that. Um, but they decided they did not do that. They popped it up in the air and yeah, called for a for a fair catch. Yeah, that rule changed uh, about two years ago, I think, when they started implementing the if you fair catch it inside the twenty five on a kickoff, you get it at the twenty five. Is when that change went in as well. Yeah. Let me ask you this, Jamie, with regard to um, the number of times the tech went for it on fourth down, uh, which they went for it seven times and they were successful four times. Do you do you think that's do you think that changes as the team structurally gets better? You'd like to think that you won't have to go for it as much on fourth down because you're picking up first downs. Right. Uh, but I think in the same scenario, it doesn't appear that way. Okay. No, I mean, I, I don't. I you think, think that's this, is, his, this, his, this is it. I think this is our coaching staff style. Okay. Um, does it... Um, give you the heebie-jeebies when you when you do it deep inside your own like inside your own 40 does it make you feel like well that's a unnecessary gamble or a high at this, risk at this point i'm numb to it you're numb i to just it. expect it okay do yeah. you think other teams do as well now other teams expect it yeah um us to do it yes yeah 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 i don't think it's prizing any money yeah no no yeah. we're not we're not no. you're, you're well, right. what are your thoughts um, I, I think when it's when it's inside the forty or inside the th your own thirty five, especially early in the game in the first half, I'm not a fan of that. I just I'd rather I'd rather play for some field position, especially when your defense is playing well. Yes, yes. I mean your defense has proven that. To yeah, me, but but again, on the first drive of the game, if you go by that, you punt it away and you right. don't score seven yeah. on the first drive of the game. Right. No, I, 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 I get it. Um, uh, you went for it on fourth and one from your own 29. And you got like one, <laughs> one and a third. One, yeah, you just <laughs> yeah. barely got it. Yeah, but right? you got it. That's but all that matters. That's all that matters. Yeah. You got it. Yeah, and you had to get it throwing a pass to the outside. Yeah. Because you can't run up the middle. You just... I mean, if you can run the ball up the middle for two yards... You are a completely different offense. Mm -hmm. You just can't do it. Yeah. My, frust my frustration wasn't with the running the ball 
and not get okay so it was but it was how you got there you're running into an eight nine man box in a couple of those situations where you got one wide receiver all the way out with one defender on him and then everybody else is between the tackles check out of that and do something else at that point well no i mean on third and one man you should you at a certain point if you're a real football team okay real football team say they know we're going to run it here and we're going to pick up a yard. Mm-hmm. We're going to move the chains. Okay, you put all your big uglies in a box. We'll put all our big uglies in a box and here we go. Let's go. We're not trying to pick up eight, but we can pick up one. And right now you're having a hard time in that situation getting back to the line of scrimmage. You're just getting manhandled up there. It's also not just this one game that you've had trouble with it. It's been that way all season. Yeah. Know your limitations. Know what you can't do. Yeah. Try something else. Seven uh, nineteen this morning here on the morning drive. Um, we get this three quarterbacks hurt. Um, is ninety plays sixty passes realistic uh, football in the Big Twelve? Uh, you know what's what's getting your quarterback hurt is the, your offensive line is your quarterback's getting knocked around all the the entire game being punished now shock was you know he was running so i mean it wasn't necessarily the offensive line's fault because he was you know going for a first down you know just the way that he fell on his shoulder yeah but, shuck's been hurt twice you know down the field yeah okay um i don't and, and i don't know specifically when donovan smith got hurt i don't either yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's probably a combination it was, of all things. Yeah, so I don't know if it's stacked up on top of each other, if there was yeah. one particular play in the K-State game um, that maybe he just, you know, he came out of that game and his shoulder was wonky. Maybe he slept on mm-hmm. it wrong. I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, all I know is that I was surprised to see Baron Morton roll out there because there was no indication given of that 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 was. But then he, he, Coach McGuire wasn't asked that, or, or Coach Kitley wasn't asked that, you know, not that they would have said, oh, yeah, hey, um, thank you for asking that question. Uh, yeah, his shoulder's a little sore. We don't know if he's going to start. So whoever, if he can't make all the throws on Saturday, on by Friday, then then Barron's going to start. And then they're, they're not going to tell you that and probably shouldn't tell you that. Yeah. You know, well, they trusted, trying... trusted that he was healthy enough to come in and make one throw. Right. So right. it wasn't like they felt like he was going to break himself if he was out there. Mm-hmm. You know, and that and that's re- really unfortunate because, you know, that that occurs, um, you know, late in the in the first half. It's you know basically third and goal, and it gets knocked down, and you have to settle for a, a field goal. But uh, you go up by four at the half, twenty four to twenty at that at that point in time of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, so it felt felt really good. Did you feel good at halftime? I didn't feel like we were going to win. I felt good after the game was over. I thought we played yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I was disappointed that we lost, but mm-hmm. at 24 to 20 at halftime, I didn't think we were going to win. Okay. I mean, I mean, I thought we could win. Mm-hmm. I thought we had a chance, but I wasn't like, oh, we got this. We're way out in front of them. Four points. They can't, they can't make up four points. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. But I, I was happy. I was really happy with the way you pleased. And even after the game was over, I... Yeah. I was. I mean, I don't think you played as well in the second half as you did the, in the first half. I mean, that's obvious considering you scored every bit of seven points in the second half. And part of it, what part of it was what they did. I mean, Coach McGuire talked about that in his post game press conference. That one of the things that Oklahoma State did defensively well, was dropping eight and still being able to get pressure on the quarterback with four down linemen. Yeah. I, well, I mean, I can't. I I can't sit here and go. Oh, the reason you only scored seven was credit Oklahoma State. They did this. Well, because that means you didn't make adjustments back. Or you couldn't. What do you mean you couldn't? Well, you, you, if you made adjustments back and you still you couldn't, those adjustments didn't work. Okay, well, you, you didn't make adjustments that worked. Yeah, you didn't make adjustments that worked. If they you... made them that did, and you mm-hmm. made them that didn't. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so th- if I'm giving Oklahoma State credit, that means that I'm saying our coaching staff didn't get the job done. Well, or the, their their coaching coaching staff outdid your coaching or, staff, or or simply put that the adjustments that you made, your players weren't able to execute. Okay, that's fair. You know, okay, you you can make adjustments and you can say, hey, we need to do this, 
and then you, then it's up to the players to go out and execute. And if you're not able to do that, then the team that's made the better execution of the adjustments is going to come out on top. That's part of what happened. You had too many three and outs in the second half for whatever reason. Okay. You're not buying that, or I I mean I, I don't know. I mean if I mean you. you you showed you could play with them, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And and so, they they dominated your offense in the second half. Their 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 team slash defense, their defense slash coaching staff on defense outdid your offense slash offensive coaching staff. At the end of the day, you have to say that because they won the game. There you go. You know, at the end of the day, but up until you know, with with eight forty two to go in the third quarter, when you've just scored. And to to take a thirty to twenty three lead, you got to be feeling pretty good. I was feeling pretty good at that point. I, I mean, again, I felt I feel great today, mm-hmm. feeling like you're making big strides. Absolutely, yeah, yeah I, absolutely. I, but again, up eight doesn't with you know a quarter and a half to go doesn't make me oh we got this. No, yeah. no, 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 no. You're 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 right about that. I mean, it wasn't wasn't like i felt like oh that we got this game's game's over no i yeah. understand that you know what what's what happens after that is where you lost the ball game yeah i mean we were all disgusted that a year ago that you didn't score a single point in the second half against kansas state mm-hmm. i mean you you scored one time in the second half against this in this game mm-hmm. so and that's not a drastic difference to no, that right no and so after the kansas state game last year we were like ah, it's not on our coaching staff k-state made adjustments now, we're allowed to make adjustments, too. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Getting your sports day started the right way. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, breaking down the biggest games. If Texas Tech does not win the Big 12 Football Conference, who are you rooting for to win the conference if Tech does not win it this year? Well, busting some chops along the way. I hold back on sending you stuff. I mean, I'm very, very, very judicious. We spend three hours a day, five right. days a week together. Why yeah. do, Why would yeah. we need to communicate during the weekends? <laughs> right. Save we it for the show. We, yeah, we, say, we do. We save it for the show. The- Tune into the Morning Drive live weekdays from 6 to 9 on Lubbock Sports Station. Double T 97.3. Jamie's question of the day on Double T 97.3 is presented by Bizarre Solutions. Call them today for a free cybersecurity audit. All right, where are you going? Nowhere. <laughs> Staying right here with Red Raider football. We are now halfway through the season, Chuck. Mm-hmm. Six out of 12 regular season games. Mm-hmm. Not quite halfway since we'll be in a bowl game. Oh, okay. Now, I'm not putting it past us to be in the Big 12 championship game either, man. This conference is a, it's a mess and it's a lot of fun. I, mean, I don't know from game to game what's going on. But, all right, we're six games in the season, halfway through. Mm-hmm. I want you to give me uh, the player that's been the biggest surprise to you through the halfway point, and I want you to give me the player that's been in a positive way, and I want you to give me the biggest disappointment for a player through the first half of the season. Okay. Biggest yeah. surprise, the biggest disappointment. Hmm. Um, I, I, I'll start with a disappointment. I, I think the biggest disappointment so far has been Austin McNamara. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if he's hurt. I don't know if it's technique. I don't know if it's wind. I don't know if that's the guy is snapping the ball back to him. I don't know if he's... Did you say wind? <laughs> like we've had more wind this year yeah, than other yeah, years? Right, yeah, wind. Yeah, Yeah. the wind has blown in Lubbock other oh, no. years. I just was throwing out just... I'm just throwing out a number of, like, if I'm him, like, well, hey, man, the wind's been blowing really hard. Or, you know, hey, everybody had me on the great Ray Guy uh, award list, and I'm trying to kick the bejesus out of the ball, and I keep mishitting it. Or, you know, my foot keeps hitting it where the laces are instead of the bottom. Or, you know, you know my cleats are too tight. I don't know. It's just, I've been, I really thought that that was somebody that you could really count on to help you flip the field, and that's, and that's, that's just not been the case. So I'm, I'm going just a little bit different there, to to be just a little bit to be just a little bit different. Um, okay, so I don't know that this guy's a big surprise. I just think he's been 
really good at doing. I think he's taking his game to another level as Krishan Merriweather. You know, along that defensive line, I mean, he had 17 tackles yesterday. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Jeff. I don't think your Austin McNamara is out there. I, I think that's the layup answer. Oh, you do? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think you nailed it. Okay. The, yeah, I, okay. I think that's... The, well, I've, I've always liked it when I was going through the layup line on the left side. I felt like I, I could hit those. Yeah, well, I, I mean, he... Yeah. It's hard to... Because that's the guy you had the highest expectations for, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You know, I, you remember I made the joke, I think it was in the... And it was in the Murray State game. Yeah, it was the first game of the season when we didn't punt forever. And I was mm-hmm. like, what are we doing, man? We haven't got the ball in the hands of our best player the whole game. Yeah, no. It was in the second half right. before he finally punted or whatever. Right. I don't. I, th- I think it was that game. Anyway, you know, he's. you had such incredibly high expectations for mm-hmm. him. And that's why I feel like it's fair to say he's been a disappointment when he hasn't been nearly as good as he's been in previous years. Yeah. Jeff? I can't decide between the two of these. Austin was my first pick, but to have a different answer, I can't b- pick between these two guys, either one of your tackles on the offensive line. Left and right both. You've had penalties. You have holding calls. You've got missed blocks, complete O-lays on the offensive line, and not protecting your quarterback in any way, shape, or form, able to get a, it's. The offensive line starts with the center, but it really ends with the tackles, obviously. But those two guys have just head-scratching moments every game. That I, it's one of the many the one of the many reasons your offensive line hasn't been good is because you've gotten no protection from the outside. Positive. This feels like a, a cop-out answer. Baron Morton from Saturday. Did not expect to see him play that well on the road against a top 10 team as a freshman making his first start. We're talking about an ankle injury could be the difference between winning this game on the chat line. And this is going into a top 10 team's house and almost winning. That's impressive making your first start that way. And I didn't think we'd see him at all this year, so... Kind of a cheeky, cheating answer, but it's the best one I got. Okay, I I think um, I'm I'm just gonna go off of again. Like, if you're gonna pick a guy to be a disappointment, that means it's probably somebody that you had really high expectations for. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, Austin McNamara is is fine uh, it, because I had high expectations for him. Jeff went with the tackles. I, I I feel like the really struggles in your offensive line are in the middle. So if I was going to go with offensive line, I would probably go with guards or center um, more than I would the outside guys. But I'm going to go uh, again to a guy. I'm I'm surprised that neither one of you went with, with Mason Tharp as, I, as much love as there was for Mason yeah. Tharp before the year. But I had a ton of love for Baylor Cup. And so far, seven catches for 91 yards and one score. That to me was is way lower than what I expected. After we started talking, if you'd asked me to guess who you were going to say, I was going to say tight end group, and uh, yeah, and I would have said that you would have said Baylor Cup. Yeah, that that was the yeah. guy. I mean, I felt like he was going to be a huge factor, and um, I mean, you look at it, the, the tight ends, Cup's got seven grabs, Tharp's got six grabs, Teeter's got two grabs. And so I completely swung and whiffed on feeling like tight end was going to be a big factor for mm-hmm. you uh, so far this season. Again, you're only halfway through. That may change. Yeah. That may change. But uh, that would be um, the guy that I would say that was the one I was expecting more of, and it hasn't happened. I think my biggest surprise, um, I, I, you know, you, he was a running back previously, and they decide, yeah, you know, we're we're going to move you out of running back, or we're going to, we're going to. Um, Move you over to receiver. And maybe the thought there was for Xavier White was, eh, you're not really going to get many touches with the great running backs that we have. we got a couple of them that are in front of you, and so we'll find somewhere else to put you. But it almost feels like, no, hey, we think you'd be really good as a receiver, so let's take you off a running back where you were pretty good too, and we think you could help the team more if you were a receiver. 
and and so it wasn't like hey you're not getting it done here let's move you there it was hey you're a really talented guy let's find a way where we can get the ball in your hands more and that's to me what it's turned out with Xavier White so he's the guy that I mean already 23 grabs on the season that's third on the team um, I, I think he's got the potential to be a difference maker, the wide receiver position. He's a guy that I like can take a short gain into a long a short pass into a long gain. Uh, he can beat you down the field on a, on a, on a deep ball. So I, I feel like Xavier White's just kind of scratching the surface of how good he can be at the wide receiver position. So to me, he's my biggest surprise. Yeah, and, and Coach McGuire talked about him last Monday with regard to moving him to to basically that position and that's more of a natural position for him or where he would rather be uh so maybe it's a combination of you you got a player who's playing with in a spot where he's more familiar with and you have a need for that spot and he's taking the ball and run with it so to speak you know he's he's capitalized on his opportunity mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. another guy if you wanted to make make a claim for maybe the big big surprise would be Trey Cleveland because he's been able to catch some big balls for you mm-hmm. um, and some deep balls. Yeah. Um, so he, there's, a, there's yeah. another guy. So other guys for me that uh, I would definitely say the positive with Krishan Merriweather, I expected him to be pretty good, mm-hmm. and he's been better than pretty good. Yeah. That, so I would that, put him on the list. Mm-hmm. If I'm staying with a linebacker core, uh, I think some of us were really high on Josiah Pierre. Because mm-hmm. coach said he was going to hurt somebody. Yeah, that's what he told. That's what and, he said. And yeah. he's to me has been pretty quiet. Although he had a he had a big sack yesterday. Agreed. Or Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, yeah big, agreed. But he's to me he's been pretty quiet. Yeah. Unfortunately, that big sack where they you force Oklahoma State to punt. That's where you that's where you take the fair catch at your own four, and the game turns. Yeah. Seven forty this morning on the morning drive. Stay in sports. Well, no, we've already done that. We've already done this day in sports history. We don't need to review that. We need to do the boom, boom, boom. Give you some sports headlines and uh, some disappointing baseball, but not for one person in this room. I think he was pretty happy with the uh, result last night between the Padres and the Metropolitans. Your morning blend of sports. K-State is uh, coming off a big win over Oklahoma. Of course, the Red Raiders off their 37-34 overtime win over number 22 Texas and humor. Sure to tell them that you you suggested that, <laughs> and of course they got a big laugh. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T ninety seven three. Catch the show live weekdays from six to nine on Double T ninety seven three FM or on the Double T ninety seven three mobile app. On the Morning Drive, take a sip of my cocaine this morning. <laughs> You're so bad. You're and uh, we'll so see what happens You're over the next so hour. Nice to have you with us mm-hmm. with Jamie Litt mm-hmm. and Jeff McGuire. Mm-hmm. I'm Chuck Hines. Thoughts, comments, Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to double T973.com for that on the mobile app. Benchmark hotline is open too at 806-771-0973. We come to you this morning from the First United Bank Double T973 studio. We've Talked quite a bit about Texas Tech and Oklahoma State. It'll be topic of conversation, you know, probably all day long uh, today here on uh, the morning drive and, of course, the end of the bench, which is next on 100.7 to score. And then you have uh, bottom line. You guys probably get into that as well, right? Tech football? Yeah, I would think, right? No, I think we're just going to spend two hours breaking down the Kansas TCU game. Oh, okay. Well, sorry about you. Uh, and then uh, Texas Tech will be a topic of conversation on Tech Talk today, along with Aaron Dickens' uh, annual disdain for Christopher Columbus, which is well documented. So that look look forward to that at some point in time today. Okay. okay? Mm-hmm. Annual rant. Uh, 8.03 this morning on the morning drive. All right. Um, the other Big 12 games uh, from Saturday, Jamie, um, I guess if I said to you, oh, what surprised you about the Big 12 this weekend? We'd say Texas's domination of Oklahoma, not so much that they won, but the just absolute beatdown of 49 to nothing. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Um, so now the, the question that begets itself, is Oklahoma that bad? Is Texas that good? Was it just Texas on a good day? 
right circumstances. They got out there and they just beat the tar out of them. Well, you'd have to think that losing their starting quarterback was a bad deal for mm-hmm. Oklahoma. That mm-hmm. had to factor in some, but not that much. Not not that much. That was that was a, a shock to see that pure domination like that. I thought Qu- Quinn Ewers uh, looked really good. I thought he looked really good. Um, I was impressed with him. Four million good? I mean, that's the number that he's up to, apparently. It's not my money. I don't care what they do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I say he looked really good. It's hard to say that about anybody with that haircut. But. 21 of 31, 289, four touchdowns. Did throw an interception. Yeah. Um, but um, I, I think Texas is absolutely good enough to win this conference. I think that Oklahoma... I don't know that they're, you know, we talked about this last week where it's like, um, I just keep giving them the benefit of the doubt because they're Oklahoma. Yeah. They're so talented, Mm -hmm. right? I don't know that he's going to get this team back this year. So I I don't think Oklahoma is going to go winless the rest of the way. But I do think that Oklahoma is, I don't think they're going to finish in the top five. Six in the conference. Really? Yeah. I just I just don't. Um, I could be so wrong. And I know they'll be a completely different team by the time they come to Lubbock to play the Red Raiders and all that, so I'm not predicting we're going to blow them around or anything like that. I just, they just, I don't know. They just don't, they look like a team that has accepted their fate. Okay. Uh, and and <clears throat> this started with, I mean, they've had a lot of people leave their program, including their head. Including their head. I'm not trying to make excuses for them, but well, and I mean, they lost a ton of key players. Yeah, that left when he left. They lost all their top recruits. Okay, that that left when he left, and I just, it just feels like a bunch of guys that were like, "Hey, this isn't what I signed up for." I came to Oklahoma to to play in college football playoff games Mm -hmm. and now here we are struggling in in these kind of games and it's not what i came for you here for and uh, it's kind of like once they lost the opportunity to get very far then they just kind of gave up yeah just it looks like a bunch of guys that are going i'm transferring out of here after this year texas you know it's a a complete beat down i mean they had 34 first downs i'm not going through all of it but i mean Oklahoma had 39 yards passing, 195 yards of offense. I mean, it's just, oh, it's just, it's just crazy. 39 yards passing. 39 yards passing. Wow. Uh, they were three of 15 on third down. Texas was 10 of 15. 10 of 15 on third down. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Oklahoma was two of four um, on fourth down, um, and Oklahoma was nine of 17 passing. All right, so. You know, I think what we learned is Oklahoma maybe has given up and is not really going to be a team to contend for the conference title. I think that's what I think. I think. Yeah. Okay. And and so and and Texas has its quarterback. Yeah, he looks like a good one. Okay. Um, TCU and Kansas. So here's my take of what came out of this game. Okay. My take of what came out of this game is. Uh, and Kansas's quarterback got hurt in this game. I'm, again, I'm not making an excuse for him. I think they're better than I thought they were. Okay, TCU is I think is 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 proving to be a, maybe a top four team in the Big Twelve at this point. And process of elimination. Yeah, feels like it. You'd be hard pressed not to put them in there. Yeah, I don't know if KU is better than K State. That's to be determined. And their schedule is going to start getting harder. Um, I do think they're going to get bowl eligible. I mean, they've, they're five and one now, so uh, yeah, they they're probably going to win, win a, one more. Well, I know, but I mean, <laughs> they've been five and zero oh before and lost seven straight. They just, I don't, and I don't know what the status of their quarterback is. He went out with a shoulder injury. He was in street clothes in the second half, but their backup was a guy that has been a starter for him before. But TCU, I thought looked good. I mean, for them to go in there and and win that game and and somewhat raucous environment. I mean, it's not like they've just been setting the house on fire over the last few years. I mean, they got rid of their coach last year. Um, and then, so I think TCU is, I think they've validated themselves as to be a, a problem in the Big 12. 
I, yeah, I, here's what I think. I don't think there's anybody great in the Big 12 Conference. Mm -hmm. I would agree I with that. I, I don't think anybody is you know, look at them and say, oh, man, if they made it in the playoff, they could do some damage. I don't I don't think, I think anybody's going to get in the playoff from the Big 12. Well, I mean, if Oklahoma State keeps winning. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, so somebody's got to knock them off for that to, to not happen. Um, I, man, I, I just, after this weekend, I just continue to look at the rest of Tech's schedule and go, yep, you could win that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Or, yep, you could lose that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. That one. I mean... Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just that's fun. Yeah, that's is, fun to me. There's, I was gonna say it's better than. It doesn't the, look like any teams that are just head and shoulders above everybody else. Does not look hopeless. It does not look, look hopeless, but at the same time, there looks like there's no patsies. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, you know, how about Iowa State? I know. I mean, Iowa I State's given up 23 me. points in the last two games, and they're 0 and 2. Yeah, 23 combined. No, no, 24, 24, and they're 0 and 2 in those two games. Yeah, that's crazy. It is crazy. I mean, Iowa State is not that bad, but their offense is pretty rough. But I mean, they lose by a point to Kansas State. I mean, they could have been, and they missed three field goals last week and lost by three. Yeah. Iowa State could have won both of those games. Both both teams Saturday, K State and Iowa State were terrible on third down. K State four of thirteen, Iowa State five of thirteen. Terrible on, on third down offensively. Yeah. They both were really good on third down <laughs> Defense. defensively. Yes, they were. They sure were. You've been listening to the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. For more from Lubbock Sports Station, go to double T 973.com.